Good morning. It is Thursday, November 1st. Michael Brown, good morning to you. You are the first one on. Subaru, Steve and Michelle, Janelle, <laughs> Jim Ziegler, good morning. Alpha Dog, how are you, my friend? I hope everyone's doing great this morning. Um, yes, good morning to everybody. Okay, so you know why I started this show? I told you guys, because I was working on this journey of, of me, right? And that I wanted an audience and people and friends that would hold me accountable. Trendy, good morning, Natalie, Anthony, Melinda, Melissa, Janelle, Nigel. Good. Thank you guys for joining me. So I was I worked all day yesterday on content. And so if I could just kind of get real with you guys, I got a really, really great email yesterday. <clears throat> and it was from um, my literary agent. And she said, are you available to be in New York on November 15th for some meetings? Um, Larry, how are you? Janelle. Um, anyways, and so I was really excited about it, right? And I don't know if you guys have ever, ever put your heart and soul into something. And, uh, you know, it seems like it's going along great. And then all of a sudden, you know, it takes a right turn. And um, for me, that is writing this book, The Art of the Big Sell. And it, for those of you who have never written a book or tried to get a book published, it's not easy. I mean, you know, in your head, you're thinking, I've got the greatest concept. This concept is going to help people. It's going to help people take their business or their lives or whatever it is you're writing about to the next level. I mean, I have lived the art of the big sell for the last six years, you know, building a movement. Uh, Paul, how are you? Uh, Sandy, good morning. Um, building a movement within the automotive industry, you know, building a movement that would empower women, that would empower millennials. You know, because sometimes, you know, the best way to build a movement sometimes is when you're on the other side of it, right? And everyone's batting against you. And so as I was going through and I was preparing for this meeting and getting my thoughts together, you know, I thought, what is the one thing sometimes that holds me back? You know, I really had to dig deep on that. I want you guys to think about what holds you back sometimes, you know, and if I can just be real with you, it's persistence. You know, um, I am probably more guilty of most people that I, that I know of this whole shiny ball syndrome, right? I did it when I was a car dealer. When when people would come in my office, when vendors, vendor partners would come in my office, and they're like, Lisa, we've got this new product or this new subscription-based thing, shiny ball. And if you subscribe to it today, you know, you'll sell more cars, you know, you'll, you'll do more business. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, 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 sign me up. And then I would give it about 30 days. And if I didn't sell more cars, then I would dump it. But as I thought about it yesterday, um, I can't tell you guys how many times. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, Nigel, Sandra, uh, Dina. Um, I can't tell you how many times in life that I've done that, right? It's like, I, I, I think I've got the big idea. I'm going to do it. And then I get through it and I'm like, mm, no, you know what? I'm not feeling it today. I'm going to change paths. Has anybody else done that? Has anybody else out there, have you guys struggled with persistence sometimes? You know, as I work through my 365 days of being more fierce, of being better than what I am today, you know, I, I, I had to really, I've gotten really self-examine what the roadblocks are. Hi, Greg. How are you? Amy, good morning. Um, Iona, Robin, how are you? Have you guys ever had to struggle with persistence, staying the course? Because somebody throws an anchor or a wrench into what your plan was, what your big idea was. So all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to take a right turn. I'm going to take a left turn. And, you know, that, you know, getting that email yesterday, I mean, it was really great news. But I know you guys have heard me talk about the art of the big sell for a long time. And, you know, um, having to edit and re-edit this book proposal. This book proposal made me a little crazy. I won't lie. Uh Oh, good morning, um, Amy and Michelle. So what what do you guys struggle with? I mean, I know for me, for sure, it's persistent sometimes because, you know, I want to be excellent in what I do. Um, anything I do, I want it to go out big. I want it to be great. Good morning, Sean Thomas and Amy and Janelle. How are you guys? What I'm talking about, you guys are, you guys are on with Lisa Copeland, 15 Minutes of Fierce. You know, it's a new month, and so therefore... Um, it's just new stuff in my head. And I was telling everybody that, you know, I got this email yesterday from my, my literary agent. And 
it's good news. It's absolutely good news. You know, potentially I have a meeting in New York with a couple of people on the 15th publishers for my book, which is really, really great news. But as, as I was going through that email, I mean, we have worked on this book proposal for over six months. And, you know, when I first wrote it, I was like, this is really good. This, this, these are, this is the secret sauce. This, this is the keys to my success. And I'll tell you guys, I mean, it got kicked around. It got edited. I mean, I, you know, anyways, and then I was in Barnes and Noble yesterday looking at books. I mean, you guys ought to see all the books I've got sitting on my, on my desk. I mean, they're just they're everywhere. And, and, um, and I'm in Barnes and Noble and I'm like, oh my God, there are so many books out there. Why, why would anybody want to buy my book? You know, and so that's kind of where sometimes I think self-doubt comes in. Like I should not have walked into Barnes and Noble yesterday. And I went there about noon and I got this email from my literary agent at about four o'clock. So sometimes I think that that's just God's way of saying, stay the course, stay the course. And I think sometimes I think we need supernatural powers that tell us to stay the course. Um, you guys are on there. So Anthony says, I think we do more, more in that in the car business than any other industry. <laughs> the shiny penny, right, Anthony? We tend to make that call to the bullpen, cancel programs, fire people, etc. a little too fast and not see the forest through the trees because we, we are so results oriented. God, that is so perfect. <clears throat> Anthony, you're right. Maybe, maybe that's my problem. Maybe it's because I came out of such a results oriented business that I can't even, if um, I don't see, um, if paths, and that's really an issue with me, not anybody else. And Sean Thomas says, thanks for sharing um, the self-doubt stuff. Renee, good morning. I think I I saw you, um, I think I saw you this morning, maybe even. <laughs> and, and Renee says, books are a labor. And if you look behind me back here, that was a labor of love between Renee and I was, you know, writing the book, Crushing Mediocrity. But, <clears throat> you know, persistence is so hard. And God, Anthony, thank you for saying that because I really beat myself up over it yesterday. And, you know, again, an email doesn't mean you're, that you're getting a book publisher. An email doesn't mean anything. And she literally ended the email with no promises, no promises, you know, but are you available? Can you come to New York? And, um, you know, so that being said, that was like the glimmer of hope that I needed to tell me to be persistent and to stay the course. And um, so I'm so glad Renee's on here this morning because she literally heard this whole story yesterday or last night. And I said, you know, I said I was in Barnes and Noble yesterday and there's millions of books. You know, typically when I buy books, I buy them online. So I don't get the velocity, the, the massiveness of walking into a bookstore going, how do all these people get a book deal? How are all these books sitting on the shelf? And so I just, I wanted to talk about that today is, you know, is, is the persistence that it takes to be successful. And um, I've had several friends, very, very famous authors. I'm not really, I don't think I should call them out, but <clears throat> that, that had, you know, 15 or 20 refusals on books, right? And, and publishers turning them down when they went, but they stayed the course and they made the book better and whatever they did. And then they finally got a book deal. And so, you know, good morning. How are you, Sean and Ken Walls? He said, I just started recording my book on audio a full year later, publishing it, LOL. Um, Trendy saying frozen. Uh-oh. Um, Rick, good morning. I don't, I'm not showing Trendy that I'm frozen on my side. Julia, good morning. So what do you guys, you know, what do you guys struggle with? Because as I went through the great highs and the great lows yesterday, and luckily my night ended on a high, what is it you struggle with? I mean, I'm going to say for sure, mine is persistence. And God, Anthony, I think you nailed it. And, you know, I didn't even nail it. Thank God I've got this group that I get to talk to every morning. Uh, Aaron Sheik says, good morning, all. Mabel. Sandy says, thanks for being so real, Lisa. Part of my struggle, struggle is overcoming being unknown, not bright or sh and shiny in our industry. I know there's a need for what I do, and you remind me to stay the course. God, thank you, Sandy. Oh, but I'm telling you guys, God, I think Anthony, I think you answered it for me. I come out of a results-oriented business, as do most of us. And if I don't see results, I think, okay, I got to shift to the right. I got to shift to the left. I got to do something different. And so I'm really, that is what I'm going to just really um, anchor down on this month. Hey, Kyle, how are you? Um, is staying the course. Is staying the course and believing that um, what I do is what I'm supposed to do. So it's, you know, it's, um, 
it's persistence. So why don't we try to like, you know, make this month and I want to talk about it. I'll talk about it through the month is, is persistence. Because literally, y'all, I mean, I'm in Barnes & Noble yesterday, and I was just so like, ugh. You know, it was that self-doubt. It was like, you know, what makes me think that my story or my advice is good enough to sit amongst these thousands and thousands of books sitting in Barnes & Noble? And then literally, I get the email yesterday afternoon. And it, and it said, are you available for this date? Can you come to New York City? I've got for some face-to-face -face meetings. But then she wrapped it with, no promises. And if you can't, it's okay, but, you know, no promises. And so, you know, there's just these great highs and great lows when it comes to life and it comes to business. Um, Sandra says, Anthony, great point. And I'm with you, Lisa. Stay the course, right? Heather says, I feel the same way. I don't get results. I react instead of respond. Stay the course. Thank you. Well, I'm super glad I brought this up today. Obviously, I'm not the only one in the world struggling with it. But it's just, you know, it's just so easy to go right and to go left. And I think we live in a world full of content and shiny balls and... Um, Anyways, I'm just God, I'm so glad I have you guys. Um, Robin says she totally agrees with self doubt, and I, and I, and I came out results oriented. Oh, I came out of results oriented, and not seeing that every day is frustrating at times. And Michelle says whenever you doubt yourself, look back at everything you've already overcome. And Laura says persistence. This will be great. Focus as we near the end of the year. Yeah, thank you, Laura. You know, but I just, you know, I just want to encourage you guys today to stay the course. And again, my, you know, the email I got yesterday doesn't say I'm getting a book. It doesn't say anything. All it says is maybe, 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 if you're available, then maybe, maybe, maybe we have some face-to-face -face meetings for you in New York. And um, so there's just nothing else I can say to you guys today. That would be it. Um, we're going to do the drawing uh, for the book, Outwitting the Devil. And for those of you who might just be tuning in, this is Lisa Copeland. It's 15 Minutes of Fierce. I do it every single morning. It's really a journey that I'm personally taking to make myself the best version of me. And so it's really causing me to dig deep and to analyze where I'm strong and where I'm weak, where I'm weak. And I think probably one of my le uh, weakest links sometimes is persistence. And it is, you know, going, okay, this isn't working. And Anthony, God, I am so, so glad you said that. And coming out of such a results oriented business, like coming out of the auto industry, it's like you got until the end of the month. If you don't produce, you literally go from hero to zero. And, um, and so, you know, you have to figure out how to do it all over again. And I think that that's where sometimes we don't walk into our greatest power is because we hit that, that zero, that zero marker. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, I got to figure out how to do this again versus just going, no, I'm going to climb out slowly. I'm going to stay the course. And, um, that is something I'm really going to work on. And I'm going to have you guys help me hold me accountable. Laura, never turn down those maybes. Please keep us posted. I will. Thank you. Ziegler says, those of you who habitually quit before you reach the goal, you spend your entire life starting over again. If you don't like starting over, don't quit. That is the great, great Jim Ziegler, better known as Alpha Dog, who's an absolute legend in the automotive industry. That's great advice. Great advice. Uh, Nigel, <clears throat> when your book is published, we will, uh, we, you will walk into Barnes & Noble and see your book displayed at the front door. Well, thank you. I hope so. But even if it's not, that's okay because it will not be from lack of effort. And, you know, I think a book deal, just like getting a television show or getting a movie or something like really great and big. So a lot of times it's just, it, it is it is a once in a lifetime deal. But you know what? I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to keep doing what I do. And, you know, there have just been great highs and great lows with it. Not a lot of great highs though. It's kick it back, re-edit it. You need to expand on this. You need to take this out. We don't like your idea. Um, Anthony says, today is a perfect example. Now, first, every person in the car business today feels like it, yeah, feels like a hero or a zero, depending on October. It's true. So if today's show is nothing else, just like everybody has said out there, you've got to stay the course. You've got to be persistent. If you believe to your very soul that what you're doing matters or that, um, or that you've, you have a dream that is so big, I mean, anything that is great is worth fighting for. And you got to stay the course. And I'm going to try to take my own advice. I'm going to post the winner of the um, Outwitting the Devil book in the next couple of hours. Um, we did not get a chance yesterday to go through. I had trick-or-treaters and all kinds of stuff. I did not have a chance to go through all the names that did everything I asked them to do yesterday. So I will post it. Um, it was the last book. Sharon Lecter, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Um, Carol says, great wisdom. Amy says, you're amazing. <laughs> Most decision makers keep going with junk. They should just end. You know what, though, Amy? I wish that sometimes I would, you know, I mean, I think sometimes I think I end things too quickly. 
I've been married for 30 years, so I'm, I am going to give myself that one. Um, so today's advice, you know, today's topic on uh, 15 Minutes of Fierce with Lisa Copeland is persistence. And just encouraging you, just like I'm encouraging myself, to stay the course. I cannot even just tell y'all what it was like walking in Barnes & Noble yesterday and just thinking, it's never going to happen. And then getting that that maybe, 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 you have a meeting email. Um, and it's just amazing how, right? And how your emotions can go. And But at the end of the day, I fundamentally know the world needs my book. It is absolutely what I believe the best business advice is for business. And that is to build a movement, to galvanize people behind you, and to build brand an army of brand ambassadors so that they sell your product and you don't have to. I believe it to my soul. I lived it. And that's why we did what we did in the auto industry. And I can't let the little things make me take a right or a left turn. So my theme, my personal theme for November and hopefully the rest of my life with the help of all of you is persistence. All right, guys, we're at the end of the show. Um... Yes, Todd, thank you. You make it a great day, Amy. Ken says you rock, Lisa. Thank you so much. So anyways, you guys, um, it just seems like sometimes 15 minutes is not long enough, but I'm a respecter of time. I'm a respecter of all of you. Thank you so much. And I will see you tomorrow morning at 645 on 15 Minutes of Fierce with Lisa Copeland. If you like this show, share it. If, if, if you know somebody that needs to stay the course and be persistent, tag them in this and join our group, the um, Big Sellers Mastermind, where we spend a lot of time encouraging each other. But stay persistent, stay fierce, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.